I can't believe what just happened. For context and anyone that doesn't watch CRL, there's five sets. There's 2v2, King of the Hill, 1v1, 1v1, and 1v1. You just need a best of three. You just need to win three sets. And SK Gaming already won the first 2v2 set, and they won the King of the Hill set. They just needed one more set to win. They got reverse sweeped in the final moments. It was probably the craziest world finals that could have ever happened. The most important game of these two players' entire career. World Championship on the line. Sam in with the minor, JP to catch with the knight. Let's do this. Sam goes knight in response, Hunter in the back for JP. Sam's competitive career started in 2018 in the Sus Cup 2, where he and a team called Habibis took number one there and they continued in RPL Americas, the sixth edition where as part of one of the longtime clubs in Clash Royale, Sandstorm, he took number one. It's been a long time journey of competitive comp competitive play to get right here. But this guy has won before. Go Knight here to catch the Knight plus Cannon Cart push. Gonna need a high DPS unit up top. There it is, the Hunter right on top of the Cannon Cart for the Knight to tank. Minor wall breakers for OP Sam. Haven't seen as much bomb tower as maybe we saw a few months ago, Andrew. And that bar barrel eats up those spear goblins pretty easily. Yeah, that bomb tower is going to be a nice unit for, or a nice building for IMJP to have. Obviously, can be played on defense against a minor wall breakers push for a plus one trade and only taking a little bit of damage. 90 seconds away, minor to the outside spot. 2390 left hand side for JP, 2318 on his right hand side. Does have the dual lane lead as both of OP Sam's towers are under 2300. There's that bomb tower coming out, cleaning up those wall breakers. Negative two trade early on, but of course that bomb tower at about 60% HP, gonna be able to provide defensive utility here on either lane. Knight not gonna get help from the bomb tower, so not gonna be much of a threat going in the opposite direction. Cycling spears in the back is Sam Knight in that same lane for JP. Wall breakers in here. Now the hunter has to come up high. And now that Sam's not worried about tornado, and to see him start varying that minor placement a bit more outside of the safe spot. IMJP with a little bit of a miss drop there, getting the hunter in front of the cannon cart. Now minor has to come down on defense for Sam. A misplay by IMJP, but also a misplay by Sam ends up complimenting that. And that Musketeer gonna get tanked for pretty nicely. Hunter gets hurt by that fireball and JP with a chance to put a ton of damage on the left-hand side. Yeah, three massive shots in along with that skeleton damage. Sam looking quite far behind here in game number two. Minor wall breakers have been a very, very tough win condition here at the World Finals. They've been doing okay when they find themselves in mirror matchups, but with all the hunters out there, all the bar barrels and defensive buildings, it has been very difficult to get those minor wall breaker pushes on tower. Graveyard in, Sam going spears to the opposite side, away from the graveyard, giving no extra support against those skeletons, and this is gonna be a ton of damage again. Yeah, really is. 332 remaining on that tower, still not within spell cycle range. You know that IMJP is going to get another graveyard down as soon as possible. That graveyard means that Sam cannot stay on the offense. There's the bomb tower, happy to make the negative two trade. Yeah, and that musketeer shreds the minor and the advantage going more and more JP's way with under 90 seconds left in sudden death. A desperation earthquake coming in to clean that bomb tower off the board. Bar barrel coming in just in time. Now here, bomb tower meeting this big time push. This feels like the moment where JP takes game number two. Yeah, it really does. Fireball in. Skeletons will finish it off, and we are all evened Ooh. up. Championship point. Can JP send this one to the fifth and final set? SK Gaming, top of your screen. Team Queso at the bottom, our number one and number two teams out of the West, duking it out again here in the grand finals in Shanghai. Sam looking to take home his very first title. Bar barrel to open for JP, Snowball stops that one. Skeleton Dragons. And JP sets up Giant Skeleton in the back. Skeleton Dragons usually do mean Lava Hound. I mean, it's basically the only thing you've seen him with here in this competition. Lava Hound in the back to meet the giant Skelly. Maybe barbs to surround. 
Tether barbs this around or minor to pull. Skarmy Ooh. for OP Sam. That's a little bit of a wrinkle. Yeah, and you know what? That's a cheaper wrinkle than a Barbarian's, and that's a really, really nice moment for him. Flying Machine getting on top of that Barbarian clone coming in. So <laughs> I am Sam looking to get fancy here in the final game, Rich. Clone in the clinching game for OP Sam, the mad scientist indeed, and that is a flying machine on the tower. Oh my god, he is doing it. He's doing exactly what he used to do back on TSM, shocking his opponents early on. Lava Hound plus Skarmy early with the clone to boot and about a thousand HP is JP down. Yeah, JP's just trying to figure out what the heck's going on here for a second. Oh my word. Well, look at what he's got, too. He doesn't have great responses for the Skarmy, other than, the, of course, the Bar Barrel, which means that he's got to always have that locked and loaded, ready to go for that. But then you talk about the clone. What does he have splash damage-wise? There's the Bar Barrel. Lumberjack in, and, you know, the Bar Barrel getting those Scar that Skarmy down because it was a little bit high. Lumberjack does go on the Royal Giant, though, which is what he needed. Lumberjack yeah. on, the, on the Giant Skeleton. A nice, a very smart fisherman from JP to stick all of that inside the Giant Skeleton Bomb. Yep, and then it still gets the Fisherman time to connect. There's the second Clone coming in. A lot of pups down. Bar Barrel to pop, but pups on the tower. Sam making a run for it here. Flying Machine down in response to the Hunter and the Barbarian will not get there. Giant Skeleton, and this time with healthy Zappies behind. That's very, very important. Those Zappies doing a lot of work to support that Giant Skeleton. Has to find some way to stop it. Now the Skarmy comes out. Yeah, Skarmy raged up, though, means that that Hunter, or excuse me, that Fisherman has to come out as well. 478 HP stands between Sam and a World Championship. Two flying machines on the board. Skeleton Dragons. And clone this clone range. here, yeah, very interesting. Can it get enough through to get past the giant skeleton bomb? And it cannot. Yeah, that I bomb cleaned that. everything up. Yeah, that's a good call there, Rich. I do not love that clone. A little preemptive, maybe a little bit of nerves coming in. Zappy's down behind. There's the Skarmy plus the Heal Spirit. This is a pretty great push put together by IMGP, but I really don't think it's going to be enough. Flying Machine has been an absolute problem for JP and you go well why isn't he doing anything about it because it probably because that last card is an earthquake and the earthquake not gonna get a flying machine that's a real problem look at that flying machine still out of princess range yeah there's the clone here to help with the DPS on top of that royal giant that's the idea there royal giant still gonna get a shot in with that giant skeleton bomb going off great bar barrel coming in from IMJP this is absolutely huge. Will the Barbarian hit? And it does not by a hair. 388 to 530. And that Earthquake could become a factor here, especially if this Royal Giant gets on tower. There's the Lumberjack. Earthquake going to come in to slow things down. IMJP extends this to the fifth and final set. I'm just going to interject before the final set. I can't believe that Sam brought Lava Clone and he almost won the final set for the World Championships. This has been a very uh, a big rivalry between these two squads and it will be settled right now the fifth and final set of our world championship here we go ruben morton queso sk all the glory on the line ruben looking like it might be hog triple spell what with the skeletons archers and now the knight morton looking morton like he's potentially gonna... going yeah Can't take to the skies And there you go, Hog goes to the left-hand side. And you nice. see that Morton has to spend those barbs in the middle and to give up those Hog shots just to contend with that stuff on the ground. Yeah, that's a pretty good split of the barbs. They're going to create just enough pressure here on the left-hand side that Ruben does really have to respond to. Now you see that balloon coming in behind. A late bomb tower comes down with some archers. And that should really, really help clean up this balloon. So actually looking at Lava Loon and not just... Lava by itself, Balloon does not get the shot, but death damage will take those archers off the board and do a nice chunk on the right-hand side. 1767, Morton takes the lead. I can't breathe. <laughs> I know, I know, I know exactly what you mean right now. So here we go, Inferno Dragon. Gonna be an interesting card here for Morton. Not a lot of opportunities to get great use out of the Inferno Dragon, other than really on the night and maybe working across the center of the map to catch that bomb tower. 
A little extra sizzle there. 17.30 left-hand lane to 17.37 on the right. Ruben slightly ahead. And here we go into double elixir time. Yeah, Morton setting up here, pushes on the left, now going to start working in this lane. And we'll see, you know, Ruben probably going to go in with a hog on the right-hand side. Yep, there it is, and that's exactly what he needs to do. He needs to be comfortable switching lanes here because Morton is making it so that he can't keep playing in the weaker tower. Three sh oh, two shots in with that zap coming down. You don't see a lot of zap these days. And here we go. Cage should be in cycle, and there you have it. And, and there's Inferno. some Inferno Dragon value. Yeah. 1190 on that tower, though. Ruben staying pretty relentless throughout. And that's one thing that's really difficult with this Hog triple spell deck when you're playing Lava Hound is that that Lava Hound takes a lot of attention in the back to get going. And this Hog triple spell cycles like crazy. And that's wow. two big shots on the left hand side. I can't believe that second one came in. Ruben playing this pretty perfect. Well, keep, and keep a note, we keep, we've been calling it Hog Triple Spell, Andrew, because we're so used to it being Triple Spell. Oh, yeah. It's just Not two. having the Snowball, it's the Hunter in here, which is uh, which gives him that DPS against these air troops. Yeah, which has been really, really important here. Hunter coming down just as we're talking about it. Dropped on that balloon. And nothing for this Hog Rider Cage in late game number one for Queso. And then in the final set, determine the World Championship. It's going to be Morton versus Ruben. They're arguably the best players in Clash Royale. Surgical Goblin couldn't have said it better himself. We couldn't have asked for a better finals. 2-2, Ruben versus Morton. Let's see who is the best. Here we go. Championship point for Ruben. Morton needing to win two to do the same. I'm just going to watch this one, okay? You got this. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. You go ahead and do whatever you want. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to watch it, too. I might talk a little bit as well. Morton cycling giant skeleton in the back. Fisherman down to work on that night. Cannon card in for Ruben. Yeah, that cannon card going to get pulled across the bridge here, though, by the fisherman before the giant skeleton makes it within Princess Tower range. No, not quite. Giant skeleton walks all the way up. And here we go, Royal Giant down, and we've seen this matchup before today, Andrew. We sure have, and, and honestly, it didn't work out too well for SK Gaming. Sam had a really, really difficult time getting that Royal Giant on the tower. And missed a couple of mortar pickups as well, so. Very curious to see what he does in this situation. Again, has to make sure he has the proper counters for the graveyard when it comes in on top of that. And you saw that right there, even from Morton. That's a slight misplay from him. That bar barrel coming out a second early, not taking off all three of those spear goblins, allowing only one hit instead of two. It's not that big of a deal, but it is something that is a bit uncharacteristic from Morton. Bar barrel in on the giant skeleton. Cannon cart trying to get through, but that fisherman will keep it off its wheels. And, here's and one that's a good Royal Giant. Yeah, this is one of the things you talked about in the matchup that didn't really work out for Samrich, is using that Royal Giant to get on top of that mortar. And this time he does exactly that, gets a couple shots out of it. Yeah, two big time shots, 1867 on the right hand side on Ruben's lower tower. High giant skeleton here to set the line. Maybe a heal spirit once again off to the left hand side. Yep, pretty much par for the course here. Now cycling that earthquake and that giant skeleton bomb cleaning up. Mortar shot does get on top of the tower, but that first sequence was brilliant by Morton. And it's interesting because of the situation with the rest of the cards, the cannon car in particular, you see Morton kind of has to let that mortar get on tower so he can defend properly against this, what you see right here. Yeah, but this is the difficult part. Yeah, Rich, that's that's 100% correct. That's the way more threatening of the two, right? This mortar is pretty easily manageable. Those graveyards with the responses that Morton has, he saw what that did to Sam, and you're 100% correct in why he's sequencing the cards the way he is. Giant Skeleton high to try to stop the support troops from coming through. Fisherman, Barb Barrel, and Hunter all right there. Lots of fireball value for Ruben. 
Yeah, he gets all three of those units. The Heal Spirit does come in, though, here and help clean that up a bit and provide a little bit more HP to these fishermen. But this is exactly what we were seeing in the last time this matchup happened, was a lot of difficulty getting on top of tower because of these defensive mortars. And here you go, Morton has to respond with the High Hunter. Minute 40 remaining, sudden death overtime. Ruben does have championship point. Morton needs to win two, has to start with one right here, right now. Zappy's high, lots of fireball value there for Ruben. That's a lot of fireball value. Giant Skeleton Bomb gonna go off right where he needs it. That Fishman's gonna actually go to where Morton does not want it. Now not able to pick up that mortar is the Heal Spirit or the Fishman, so Giant Skeleton comes down. Hunter high, Cannon Car gonna go and snipe on that Hunter. Barb Barrel in to try to help out a little bit. Fisherman pulls the Knight in low. Minute seven left right now. Ruben with the lead, and he's gonna put a little more pressure on right here. Yeah, that's a lot of pressure. That mortar is gonna connect on the tower as well. That giant skeleton too close. Morton watching this slip between his fingers. Queso maybe gonna pull off the greatest comeback in the history of Clash Royale, but still 959 HP standing in the way. Second giant skeleton down. Morton just going crazy at the bridge. Bar Barrel there as well. Has to still play defense against the graveyard. 36 seconds left. Giant skeleton deep in enemy territory. Not going to get away from that cannon cart. And here you go, Royal Giant. This might be the last opportunity for Morton to keep SK Gaming alive. Bomb tower. I mean, excuse me, bomb not going to go off to clean up that cannon cart. So the Royal Giant staying right up high, not getting any shots in. Mortar plus Cannon Cart there to distract the Royal Giant. Fireball in on top of that Hunter. 251 HP. Ruben is looking like he's going to be the next World Championship. 117 HP remaining. EQ trying to make room. It's not going to happen. Team Queso completes the reverse sweep, and they are your 2020 Clash Royale League World Champion. I'm, I'm, I'm so speechless. I, I was shaking when I watched this live. This is... The best finals of Clash Royale history. I'll see you all around.